The Micro Plus 3D printer by M3D. I've had it for about a month now and it's time to give you my thoughts on this printer so far. So when I unboxed this 3D printer, there were a number of things that really impressed me about this tiny little package of a 3D printer, but there was one question that people kept asking me. Now, before I answer that question, let me reiterate some of the things that I found really impressive. First of all, the power consumption of this printer. It runs on only five volts, and I thought at the time maybe that I'd be able to run it off directly off of the USB that it has to plug into to work. Unfortunately, while it runs on five volts, it uses four amps, which is more than a USB port can supply. So that doesn't look like a possibility at this time. Still though, it's as eco-friendly as a 3D printer can be running on just a tiny amount of power like that. Now, like I said, it does have to plug into the USB. It is a headless 3D printer, which means that you can't start a print, you can't stop a print without having it connected to a computer and running software on the computer to control it. And that might seem like a bad thing. To some people it is, but it actually has an advantage in that it has some of the greatest automated scripts that are just as wordy as they want to be because they're not worrying about fitting the text on a tiny screen or memory consumption. They can just use your computer and give you a great, great scripts for doing simple things like leveling your bed and unloading and loading your filament. Just simple tasks that I feel needs to have a little bit more help on most 3D printers. This one makes those as easy as possible, and that's made possible by it being a headless 3D printer. So good with that and bad as well if you don't like headless 3D printers. It's it's kind of a mixed bag on that, but I do I do kind of enjoy that. Now one thing that I didn't really enjoy, they they made sure in the documentation to say, yes, you can load filament underneath the build plate, but we do not recommend you do that. Now, this is as big as this thing can print. It's got a tiny build volume. This is its maximum T-Rex size. So what do you do with this space underneath here? Well, if you're me, you store cookies in it. Ha <laughs> ha. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, I bet if you plugged up that hole that the filament goes out of, you could like put milk in here for dipping. Okay, in all seriousness, you can get a heated build plate upgrade for this 3D printer. So if it's important to you to have a heated build plate, that is an option. Though I would be worried about what that does to the power consumption of this printer. I'm pretty sure with a heated build plate, you can no longer say that it's just sipping at the power and lowering your carbon footprint. But still, for the most part, I use that space underneath there to store the spare nozzle that they sent me. So with the uh, with there not being filament on the inside, what do you do with your filament? Well, they, you can print, and it can print, a little filament holder that can dangle on the outside here, and I've added a length of PTFE tubing to it. but this model doesn't exist anywhere. That is to say, it doesn't, it's not on the software or the slicer or anything. And there are many of them out there on Thingiverse and Pinshape and Umagine and all sorts of places out there. There's no consensus on what is the best way to mount your filament on here. In fact, this filament mount, I kind of cobbled together from a couple different ones, and it even isn't ideal because it'll only work with these mini spools, which is fine by me. I've got some of these furlong spools still, and I really enjoy using them, and they're great for this printer. But if I wanted to do a full-size spool on this printer, I'd have to find another solution, maybe one that included legs on here to make it taller. I, I don't know. It's a problem that needs to be solved. Oh, 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 uh, did I mention the filament? They sent me many different kinds of filament. And this is actually kind of a, a bit of a sticking point for me because this filament is called their ABS 
R. But as soon as I, I was like, oh, it's ABS that prints without a heated build plate. I've got to try this out. And I printed it and it printed well. But then I tried to smooth it in acetone and it didn't react at all. And I contacted them and I said, what's the deal with your ABS? It doesn't smooth. And they're like, oh, it's not ABS. It's ABS R. I'm like, what's a R? They said, well, it's, it's actually PET G with a little bit added to it. And I said, well, what's R? And they said, oh, it's replacement. See, when they came out with this, it was actually innovative to put out PET G and they were touting it as this is our uh, ABS high temp plastic as a replacement for ABS, but it's not ABS, it's PET G. And they should relabel it, that's a little bit confusing. They also had this filament, which is a transparent flexible filament and they're calling this tough ink. But if you try to print with the code, all of them have little codes on them. And if you try to print with that code, it's gonna use the wrong settings. But if you use the setting FLX for flexible filament, it prints just fine. And I printed this flexible, squishy T-Rex, low poly T-Rex with it. That uh, actually, it didn't, it didn't work 100% well. We got some zombie-like holes in the head and it's got this really weird fin on the back because I had a sacrificial tower to try and fix the zombie-like holes. So clearly I'm not done with their flexible filament. I still get to play with it. It's still flexible though. That's pretty cool. Maybe I shouldn't have printed it with 0% infill. I don't know. We'll play with that in the future and see what we can do with that. But for now, I, I like their filament. In fact, I might even be willing to forgo their printer and just buy their filament because this flexible filament is it's absolutely glorious. I love it. Oh, and did I mention I figured out how their movement system works and it's super clever. I, during the unboxing, I noticed that their Z-axis consisted of four screws in each of the four corners that moved the whole carriage up. And I noticed that the Y carriage moved on belts that were turned with two little keys that are in the front that turn together. And I thought, I thought that it might be a core X Y system that crosses over the belts and pulls it in different ways if they both turn in opposite directions or turn in the same direction, but it's not. How do we move the X carriage? The motor for the X carriage is on the carriage. So this little print head here has in it the motor for moving the X back and forth. It just kind of, it freely floats on there and moves it back and forth, which is super amazing. But it's also got a fan on there and it's got the motor for the, the drive because it's a direct drive. It drives the filament right from the nozzle, which allows it to do some cool flexible filaments and the like, which, it's, it, it's just mind blowing how much they crammed into this little head. It's really, it's so clever. It's so innovative. And I love that part of this printer. Okay, all right, all right. I'm gonna answer the question of, can it print accurately? By saying I started by trying to reprint one of these Modi bot Mose, but the problem was the head is so loose. It's it's like a bobble head on there, but then the shoulders were so tight. Ugh, I was breaking the pet G trying to put them on. What's the deal? How can some of these knots be too wide and some of them be too narrow? Well, it turns out that this machine, because all of its motors are so underpowered, it has a problem with backlash you have to spend a lot of time calibrating the backlash to get it to stop moving too far or too fast in one direction or another. And I spent two days trying to get this backlash calibrated and still had trouble with it. Now, in the end, I also tried printing out a calibration cube. This is a 20 by 20 calibration cube with a 10 by 10 millimeter hole on the inside. But when I printed this cube, it was considerably wider on the outside, but narrower on the inside than it should have been. Now, if you see this wider on the outside, but narrow on the inside, what's that mean? It could mean a couple of things. It could mean that your filament is off spec, that it's too wide and we're feeding too much plastic in and you're getting too much squish. And you can fix that by adjusting your filament diameter or adjusting your feed rate. Or it means that your slicer, when it's trying to figure out how to draw the lines to create this shape, is drawing on the line and not taking advantage of 
X, Y horizontal uh, compensation. When a slicer gives you the option to X, Y horizontal compensate, it's because they've already figured out that they can compensate for the width of your extrusion, and they're also giving to you the setting to further compensate that to make your prints more accurate. And I was concerned that maybe their slicer that came on their headless connection wasn't letting me do that. So to fix it, I had to figure out a way to get Cura to create G-code that I could feed to this printer. And that wasn't easy. Big shout out to the people on the M3D Discord servers for helping me do that. And the fact that this has a great community behind it is also a big plus for it. After I got Cura set up, and I piped through their software, the G code that I sliced in Cura to their printer, it created a new cube. Now there is some serious under extrusion issues going on with this cube. I'm clearly going to have to figure that out. However, once I did, once I measured it, it's still wider in the Y than it is in the X, which means that it's printing everything kind of at an oval. But yeah, it was more accurate than the one printed on their slicer, which means to me that their slicer is drawing on the lines. So these are problems that could be solved, that they could solve one day. It's just a matter of software to fix that and getting the calibration right. I'm, I'm not dooming this printer at all. I'm not saying that if you buy this printer, you're making a huge mistake. I am not saying that at all. I think that there's a lot of potential crammed into a tiny package in this printer. If you are looking at this printer and you're thinking about it, be sure to hit up the Discord servers, talk to the people who use the printers and get their recommendation because any 3D printer where you don't have a community means that you're relying on their technical support for it and it's best to have as many avenues as possible. M3D's got the community and that's a very very good thing so Overall, that's my thoughts on this printer. I want to thank you very much for watching to, to this point. Huge thanks to my Patreon backers and keep an eye out for the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter. If you are not signed up on the mailing list, there's an exclusive STL for people on the mailing list who back the Kickstarter. As always, I want to thank you very much for watching and say safety first. See you next time.